Come here, dude. Are you going to attack or are you going to dance? Welcome back, everybody, to Osiris, New Dawn, and the Discovery Update. I am an old guy gaming, at least the last time they told me I was. Um, and so what we're going to do in this episode is investigate a couple of things. Uh, you guys have left me lots of good comments. As always, really appreciate the comments. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. And uh, so I've, I've had multiple people have, uh, you know, uh, leave comments about the space station. Some of you are saying that the space station is, is basically still a work in progress. It's not complete. Uh, once you put it together, put the control module on, that sort of thing, you still can't actually do anything with it. Um, and another commenter uh, basically left a comment saying, you can build it, but, you know, what do you use it for then? And, and, I'll, and, and you know, comments along those lines. And I, I completely agree with that because, you know, just keep in mind the game is still very much a work in progress. Now, I have heard that there's big plans for this game that it's going to go way beyond just Proteus. And in fact, the whole experience on Proteus is really just the beginning part of the game and that we'll eventually be able to get off of Proteus and actually go elsewhere. And I mean, not just to two moons here in Thesis Prime, but other potential systems in the Galici star cluster, stuff like that. So, um, you know, my guess is, and I don't know this, I don't have an inside line, at, you know, to the dev to the devs myself, but my guess is, you know, that like a lot of other things in the game, it's just a work in progress. We can go up there, we can build the space station and have a station up in space, but, um, you know, there's not a whole lot more we can do with it at this point. Uh, a couple of other, other of you told me that the airlock that I was putting in up there, um, actually you enter it from the end and the two side doors that I thought, you know, uh, was the external doors are actually internal doors. So, um... That would kind of explain, I guess, why we couldn't pressurize it, I suppose. So anyway, you know, considering the massive resource allocation that it requires to make that thing, I'm not 100% sure if we'll continue trying to put it together. We probably will just because, you know, I want to kind of see see it, the whole thing put together. Though, yeah, I guess you kind of can see it by just watching the intro video because it's obviously the same parts. So, you know, let me know what, how you guys feel in the comments. Do you want me to continue, you know, putting the space station together uh, just for the hell of it? Or should we kind of move on to other things, um, you know, knowing that there's not really a whole lot more we'll be able to do with it once it is put together at, at present. Uh, but here, you know, keep in mind, too, guys, just be patient with the game uh, because, you know, the devs have definitely proven and shown that they are willing to work on this thing and, and uh, get it updated and turn it into what it was originally meant to be. So we all just need to you know, bear with them and support them. And, and hopefully, you know, someday soon, Osiris will be an awesome friggin' sci-fi game. So, all right, enough said about that. Anyway, copper, copper. I've had a couple of very useful comments about copper. Uh, one of you guys told me that you can actually go into the hive in hive two, which is in the fungal forest, which is just right over to the west of us there. And you can actually find copper down there. So we're gonna go check that out. Another one of you reminded me that if we make the mining droid, it'll go around and mine, um, you know, the rock outcroppings, and over time we'll accumulate a pretty decent supply of copper too. Uh, and I think that's also a very good idea. So what we're what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually make, uh, we're gonna go ahead and make the mining droid, and maybe, maybe even multiples. I don't know. Uh, the one thing the mining droid does not do. And it's supposed to do is it, it's supposed to put the ore that it mines in a depository, but it wasn't working for me the last time I tried it. And my guess is it probably still isn't, but it will keep the minerals that it mines in its own inventory and we can find it. It's, uh, and for those of you who didn't know this, by the way, um, you can find your droid by looking for these green dots on the map. Right. So this green dot right here is our security bot. He's wandered way the hell away from our base. God only knows why. But if I ever actually wanted to go get him and bring him back, um, that's where he is. <laughs> He's just way the hell off there, wandering off, doing his own thing, having a good time. And you know, who are we to spoil his fun, right? So anyway, yeah, the droids need lots of work. The, the, uh, the idea of them is awesome. I love it. Um, but they need work. They really do need work. But that being said, because we're, we're going to make the mining droid for the uh, sole purpose of getting uh, or having something that can get us some more copper in particular. Uh, so we need those materials there, dirt, aluminum, titanium, brass, tungsten, bronze, wire, circuit, power, uh, power cell, and a diamond, oh shit, a diamond chisel? Ooh, that's kind of expensive. I mean, I guess it's not though. We got plenty of diamonds and the chisel itself's not that much. 
that expensive to make. So guys, I'm going to work on gathering all these resources up, and when I get them going, we'll make um, the mining bot. We'll send him on his way, let him mine up some copper, and then we ourselves are going to go to Hive 2 and see how much copper we can pull out of there, because that's really our stopping point at the moment. Okay, so I'll be back when we're ready to build the droid. All right, guys, changing plans. We can't... Um, we can't even make the droid because guess what I need? Copper. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're just going to go over to Hive 2 right now and see what we can grab uh, but in the way of copper and bring them back over here. Man, I'm so bummed that the friggin' mech doesn't work right because the mech is actually a really fun vehicle, you know, to, to run around in in the game. But man, it just it gets caught. I don't, if you guys didn't see that episode, like, I think it was like two episodes or so ago, it gets caught, um, you know, even on relatively mild hills and it's just a too much of a pain in the ass to, to to take around it does okay out in the deep desert but i mean you know that's not a place we're gonna be spending a ton of time in so yeah it's too bad but you know hopefully they'll get it fixed later okay so hive two is right i think it's over here if i remember right so let's go let's park the rover here and is it this guy here? No, I think it's probably this larger, this thing up here. I've, I haven't been in Hive 2 at all since the Discovery update. Is, it, is this it? Wait a minute, it's around here somewhere. Where's Hive 2? It's one of these, like, pillar things. Get away from me. Get away from me, you bastards. Um, alright, so I have two. I have to remember how to get into Hive 2. I thought it was I know it's in this general vicinity. We just gotta figure out where in this vicinity it is. Oh, I think this is it over here. Yeah, here we go. Okay. Oh, no, this is Hive 1. Oh, yeah, there is copper down here. There's a shitload of copper down here. I thought this was Hive 2. This is Hive 1. Okay, great. So, yeah, guys, Hive 1 in the fungal thicket. Um, Copper. Look at it. It's a beautiful thing. There might be skeleopods down here, too. Oh, my goodness. Look at all the copper down here. Holy smokes. Okay, we want to be careful because it is really easy to get lost down here. Way easier. Uh, I think it's more confusing down here than it is in the mines even. Yeah, it sounds like we do have some nasties down here. Look at the copper down here. Oh, this is amazing. Okay. We're back in business for copper, you guys. Back in business for copper. When I get, when we get back out of here... um. I'll show you show you the exact coordinates because I got a little confused at first too as to how to get in here. You know what I'm gonna do too? Let's um back away from those guys for just a moment. And I wanna put this on my toolbar and fight with this instead of the uh the pick, because I wanna save the pick for one thing. Uh, save the durability on the pick is what I was trying to say. All right. Now, is there anything down this way? I'm I'm not. I'm just gonna go to the bottom of this incline here. Okay. So yeah, it looks like it looks like that's it. Okay, yeah, I'm not going to go any further because I'll, I'll get lost, man. It is so easy to get lost in these places. All right, well, that, that's great. I mean, it's not a ton of copper, but it's a decent amount of copper. And very welcome considering that, uh, you know, we're pretty much we've pretty much exhausted all the copper on the surface. Except for, of course, the copper that uh, can be found in rock outcroppings. But if we can get the mining droid to take care of that for us, then, yeah, we're in business here. All right, you know what? I'm so happy about this. So super thank you to who's the one that told me to go look in the in the hive. It was 
Drum roll, please. Lewis Leonard is the one that told me about the the mining droid. Oh, it's Keith Parsons. Okay, yeah. So kudos to Keith Parsons for uh, bringing to my attention that there are there's copper here in Hive One, not Hive Two. Um, really appreciate that, Keith. And then Lewis Leonard, thank you again for reminding me. I knew this, but it hadn't occurred to me that the mining drones can get um, you know a, a decent amount of copper if you just let them go out and mine um, the rock outcropping. So huge uh, thank you to both of you guys and to all of you again for all of your comments. Super appreciate that. Uh, Max524, thank you for your comment, and, and Michael Minch, you guys uh, comment regularly, and I really appreciate it. Uh, both of you are the ones that tell me the space station is really not quite ready to go yet. So, yeah, all you guys are just friggin' awesome sauce. I really appreciate it. Uh, but this is this is great, man. This is great, because this allows us to, you know, to, to proceed at least to some extent uh, finding this copper down in here. And I think I came down into this mine like very early on in experimental, but I never came back here and I just, you know, forgot the copper was down here or maybe I just didn't even pay attention to, excuse me, the fact that it was in the first place or maybe I did, I don't remember. It's just, it was too long ago and, you know, I'm old, so I forget shit. That's all there is to it. We can hear the meteorites. One of you guys also mentioned in the comments, and I thought this was a great comment, and, you know, you can always, if you go into here and do bug report feedback... You know, you can send feedback to uh, the devs, um, and it doesn't have to just be a bug. So you, you can do, like, feature request here or general feedback and and tell them that. And, and anyway, I haven't even told you what they said. <laughs> I got a little ahead of myself. Uh, what they said is that the meteorites should bring us a, different, a, a variety of ores and not just uranium, and I completely agree with that. That would be very useful. Um, and, you know, maybe that's something that they will do at some point. It would be super useful. Okay, great, man, great. Super excited that we got some more copper down here. So let me see here. We have, I think we've gotten everything. I'm not going to harvest the bugs. I don't really care about that right now. Um, We have, let's take a look at our inventory. Look at that, two full stacks and 13 copper. That's awesome. Yeah, this doesn't go any further than here. This jumps off into no man's land. I've never actually jumped over the side of this. So I don't think I want to. <laughs> I don't think I want to at this point. So, cool. All right. Let's exit Hive 1. And we have some copper again, ladies and gentlemen. We have some copper again. So, this location is... Um, oh, will you guys just go freaking away, man? So irritating. You're a bunch of pests. You act like pesky bugs. That's what they act like. Uh, act like. Ass like. No, not ask like, act like. Okay, so I am at minus 10.7 lat and 5.0 longe. Okay, uh, that is the location of Hive 1, and it is in the fungal thicket. All right, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Let's head on back to the ranch now that we have some copper. And uh, we're going to make the mining droid. In fact, I might even make like a couple of mining droids. Uh, and just let them go do their thing, and then, you know, we'll come back two, three, four episodes later on and um, see, you know, how much copper that they, and whatever else, you know, they'll get other things too uh, that they have mined up. Okay, so let's go this way. Man, the, I'll tell you what, you guys, the rover is the freaking star of the show in this release. Um, we, you know, we still haven't, we still haven't tried out the, the hover bike yet, and we should resources allowing that sort of thing. But, uh, the Rover is much improved from what it used to be. And then the mech is the complete opposite. The mech is just terrible right now. So, you know, hopefully that'll all get fixed. Uh, I'm sure it will, but as it is right now, not so good. But this thing, uh, this thing does really well in rough terrain. I mean, really well, surprisingly well. Yeehaw! I would like to actually try out the, the hover bike too because they did... Well, you know what though? They improved fuel usage in general in the new experimental. I don't think they have in this version though, which means that the, the hover bike's going to use fuel like a mofo. And if that's the case, I'm yeah, I'm not so crazy about the idea of doing it unless we go into the settings and 
reduce the fuel consumption in general. I don't mind the fuel consumption on the Rover. I think it's just about right. But uh, the hover bike is bad. I mean, it is really bad. Um, unless they fix it. I don't know. We'll see. But our first priority right now is to make um, at least one mining droid. Maybe a couple, too. So let me get gather up my stuff, and then let's see what we can do. All right, guys. We have another problem. That other problem is that I need to make bronze in order to make those droids and bronze requires magnesium and I am plumb out of magnesium and I think this is the bad news I think I've mined it all out oh shit um I think there's magnesium on Asiel I think pretty sure there is assuming they haven't changed it since the last time I was there Damn it, though. Okay, well, I'll tell you what. Let's go. Let's just run, quickly run over to uh, Gravitas Valis, which is where it is, and uh, and look. I don't need a ton, but let's go see if we can find, you know, if there's any at all left there. Because if there isn't, then uh, I think we're going to have to head to Asriel, which we need to do anyways. Oh, man. Dude. <laughs> He's going, but you're making me drive in impossible places here. Can we get up the hill here? There we go. Okay. Okay, so this is the general vicinity that the magnesium is going to be in. So let's get um, this out, and we want to select magnesium and then get our scanner out. Okay, any purple dots at all. Yeah, I think I've got it all, you guys. And here's the thing. The space station required something like 77 magnolium uh, in total. And and that required magnesium, you know, amongst other things. And I think I, I exhausted all of it. Oh, man, that sucks. Because it's right in this area right here. Kind of in the southern part of Ballas Gravitas. There's still mercury around, but I am not seeing any purple. Oh, boy. Well, okay. I mean, even just one node probably would have gotten us what we needed, because we just need one bronze ingot per droid. It's possible that there could be one piece over this way, but I was pretty thorough, I think, you know, cleaning it all out. Not seeing any purple dots. Okay. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think it's time for us to go to Asiel. It is time for us to go to Asiel. If I remember right, there were clusters of magnesium, or maybe it was even like dent, you know, alt, dent, what's it called? Dense or enriched or whatever. Magnesium on Asiel. And uh, we need it before we can proceed we're gonna need it for other stuff anyway so let's head on back to the ranch jump uh, jump in the spaceship and head over to Asiel. did i um okay so i got my gold cover on and the heat suit heater so we'll, we should be fine in the cold that's going to give us like 45 points of, of cold protection which is should be more than enough we might get a little bit cold but we're not going to get deadly cold with that protection Zaziel is a cold place, as you're going to see. For those of you who don't know, Aziel was the first um, planet, well, it's, it's a moon, that they added to the game uh, beyond Proteus. And then later on, they added, added Lutari. And we've already been to Lutari. That's the one off to the right there that looks like an actual moon. Um, actually, before we go over there, I want to look at something real quick. 
our space base is, you know, something that I find very odd is that we can see the location of our space base on our compass when we're on Proteus, but we don't see it when we're up in space. So <laughs> not that there's a huge area, you know, that we can go to up here. It's not like we're going to lose it, but it still just seems a little bit strange. Uh, the only thing I wanted to do is I just wanted to check out this airlock really quick because some of you guys were telling me that the doors that I was using were actually uh, internal doors. Okay, so let's come to a complete stop here. Okay. So this is the actual airlock door here. Ah, gotcha. Okay. And then you you set it up to where... You know, you can you can go on either side of these internal doors. Interesting. Okay, so you know, if and when we continue to build our space station, we're gonna have to do it in such a way that this side is also connected to something. I don't know. We maybe what we could do is put. Hmm. Well, we'll have to look at the other other pieces, but obviously, we want to put something on this side too, since that is actually an internal door. So, all right, cool. Here we go. So Azil also has an atmosphere uh, like Proteus does. So when we land on it, we'll, we'll do a burn in. Okay, I can't see anything. Here we go. What? Yeah, visibility on this planet sucks. It's uh, it's not that great. Uh, or moon. I, I keep saying planet, but I should say moon. Now, we used to be able to fly in the spaceship and see mineral deposits on our scanner. But I'm, it's kind of looking like... That's no longer the case, which is going to make things much more complicated here. Because this is a fairly good-sized moon, but the terrain is, is very rough in places. Like, you know, just really deep canyons with, like, you know, lava rivers and stuff down inside. And it seems that most of the ores are in the rough part of the terrain, too. So go figure, right? Okay, let's go off this way. And we're going to land here and just kind of take a look. There is wildlife on the planet. Um, there's... Do there are docile creatures, kind of like deer, I guess, for lack of a better way of describing them. Um, yeah, those things right over there, we'll go take a look at them. And then, you know, there's also some hostile bug types of creatures, too. Okay, so let's, um, yeah, let's go take a look at these guys first. Oh, I want to put, while we're in this vicinity anyways, I want to put my gliders on. go yeah these guys are really weird looking man they're uh they're really weird looking <laughs> that's all i got to say just very different i think too if you get too close to them i think the spikes hurt oh yep yeah, yep yeah. they cause you a little bit of little little bit of alley but they don't attack you they're, they're they are uh like i said they're docile I think if you attack them, they'll bugger off. Yeah. So, 
Um, the reason I killed this guy is not because I'm a cold-hearted bastard, but because we actually need to discover it. Oh, it's a giraffe. Of course it's a giraffe. I knew that. I knew that. Okay, so what happens if we use shears on the giraffe? We get tissue. What about if... Uh, okay, that's a leg... That's the head there. Why is it not? Well, they're coming back for more. All right. What if we use the botany kit? Do we, are we getting anything? No container found for look. Oh, right. We need a container for alien blood. Right. Okay. And I'm pretty sure if we use, like, a blunt tool or uh, a knife... Excuse oh. me, sir. Oh, pardon me. Uh, if we use the knife, we'll probably get leather, I'm guessing. Yeah, we got leather or hide more precisely. And if we use a blunt tool like the pick, then we'll probably get... Uh, we got to find a, another harvestable part here. Meat. Okay. There you go. So, yeah, the first the first gentle, docile creature we found here in Osiris, and the first thing we do is kill it. We're, we're a terrible human being. <laughs> but we did it for science, though, you know, so that makes it okay. Right. All right. Anyway, um, let's take a look-see now. We're going to get our... Uh, let's get our scanner back on our thing here, on our toolbar. And let's go to F3. And I want to turn magnesium on, but as I recall, uh, the magnesium was not, it, it was kind of in, it was in some rough terrain. It wasn't in like this flat area here. Let's zoom out a little bit. Okay. So yeah, this isn't even showing any uh, you know, topographical information at all because it's it's really flat. So, yeah, you know what? Son of a gun, the more I think about it, it's going to be very difficult to find ores if we can't fly over uh, in the, sh you know, in the ship and, and use the scanner like we used to be able to do in the previous release uh, or stable version. Okay, well, um, if we were where I think I am, I thought there was like a little, kind of like a, a lava lake and like a wreck that we could salvage somewhere on one end of this valley, unless it's, there's a couple different valleys that are sort of kind of like this, so I'm thinking it's probably not this one. Here, let's get rid of that because it's not really doing anything. I'm just kind of looking with my eyeballs and not my scanner at this point. This is a good place to use the hover boost, though, because it's flat and wide open. You can really go a long ways. Yeah, you can see that it's really cold here, but my body temperature is actually fine. It's 22.3 degrees, uh, so we're hanging in there fine. Even though there's frost on our screen and stuff, you know. Okay, so we kind of got to the other end of this place. Why don't we do this? Um, so magnesium is... A low density mineral. Why don't we just tell our scanner to look for any low density mineral? And that, you know, that <clears throat> that way if we see something specific, we have a, a better chance of finding something. Not that that's going to matter. It's either magnesium or it isn't. You know what I mean? So <laughs> I'm not sure if that's going to make much difference or not. Okay, well, I'll tell you what. Let's uh, let me get back to the ship, which I can see on the compass there, and we'll uh, fly around. We might have to see if we can rely upon our our eyeballs to see, but you know that makes it very difficult in the ship too because we don't have a free camera view. 
uh, and just fly around a bit and see what you know what we can see. So let's just go north, and we'll, we'll we'll go all the way to the end of the map. I wish it wasn't so damn cloudy out too. That makes it even more difficult, you know. But we'll just keep our eyes peeled for nodes and see if we can come across something that might be of use. There's something there. That's probably just rock outcroppings, though. Let's just land real quick and take a look. Yeah, this is a very difficult moon to, to just go around on foot. Just because it's pretty big. And uh, it's very rugged. Very rugged. We're going to switch back to our other booster here. And let's do an F3. Yeah, see, I'm not picking up any low-density minerals at all. So what I saw up there was most likely just a, uh, a rock outcropping. I thought I saw it on top of this ridge here. Yeah. The thing is, too, is the the minerals, there's they're kind of in clusters. So if we see them, it should be relatively obvious because there's just a whole bunch of them in, a, in the same general vicinity. Starvation warning. So let's head on back down and proceed. So we'll just keep a north northerly heading for now. There's some of the lava down there. Man, I, I really wish we could see this from the ship like we used to be able to do. Okay, what do we have here? Rich aluminum deposit. Okay, so aluminum is... a low-density mineral. Huh. I thought if we just had this selected, it showed everything that's low-density, but maybe that's not the case. Wait a minute. Is this not working at all? What the hell, man? I have aluminum selected. There's aluminum right there. Does it not pick up the rich nodes? Oh, that makes this kind of damn useless. Yeah, it's not it's not picking up the aluminum at all. My I guess it's cuz of it's a rich node, but that shouldn't matter. Ah, oh, all right. Well, <laughs> shit. We're gonna have to be looking for a needle in a freaking haystack now. If we if the scanner just plain doesn't work at all, that's just not good. But anyway, um, the so these rich aluminum deposits, they're they're in this general vicinity. You know, there's one there, there's one up there, but um, you know, they're still kind of spread out. There's one up there, there's one over there, and so you know, if you can find one, then you basically just get out of the ship and you kind of hike around. Uh, and keep looking for the other ones. But of course, aluminum is the one thing that we just plain have plenty of. And, you know, go figure, that's the one we actually found, right? <laughs> Stupid game. Murphy's freaking law, man, I tell you what. Anyway, um, but that's the idea. So, yeah, you just have to look, I guess, now with our eyeballs, since the scanner doesn't seem to be working worth a shit, um, you know, for nodes like this. And when you see them, you land and check out what they are, and hopefully it's something you can use.
Oh man, I I am disappointed though that the scanner's not working. I just I don't get it, man. Because you know there isn't an option for rich nodes, so aluminum should be able. Oh shit, you scared me. Aluminum should be able to scan like anything, right? Or any type of aluminum. What is what is what I'm trying to say? Come here. Where'd you go? Oh, he's buggering off. The bug's buggering off. All right, well, let's uh, keep flying around here and see if we can find another deposit somewhere. That's all we can do. All right, so we're at the end of the map here, so let's turn and head south now. Give ourselves a little bit more of a swath here. All right, I think I just saw some rich lithium nodes, but I'm not 100% sure. This is very difficult, super hard to see. Uh, but let's check it out. Oh, come on, ship. Yeah, it's not going to let me land. You know, the and the fact that the, the ship takes so damn long to land, I mean, that just makes this process painful. <laughs> I'm just gonna I'm just gonna throw that out there it really does they have got to change this ship they really do oh come on man what the hell it's still not gonna let me out Ugh. okay let's see if we can go over here you should just let us be able to jump out of it you know when it gets close to the ground whether the damn thing lands correctly or not you know there we go all right let's eat something okay now i thought i saw over here some uh, a lithium deposit so that's going to be low density. Oh, yeah, low density. But that doesn't mean it's going to show up on here, right? Because apparently it's like the scanner is just completely disabled on this moon. It's a worthless piece of shit. <laughs> wasn't as if it's the scanner's fault, though. Uh, all right. I might have been imagining things. I thought I saw like a node right over on this little shelf here. Let's go down by the lava. So see the temperature, my temperature gauge? It's the middle circle in the lower left-hand corner. See how it's starting to heat up? This the outer ring is the outer temperature. And if I get really close to this, it should go like crazy hot. Hmm. Did they change that? Because you used to like massively heat up when you got too close to the lava. I mean, it still does damage to you, but it doesn't seem to be heating up. 
Huh. That's weird. Okay. What about over here? Oh, now... Yeah, now it's heating up. Now it's like, oh my god. Yeah, see how, how it's all turning orange here? It's like really, really hot outside. Okay. Well, um... Yeah, still, uh... Still nothing, man. I, it, I must have imagined seeing a note on the hillside there. I thought that I did, but I'm guessing maybe not, so. Okay, well, let's head back to the ship and continue on. Doggone it, that's just a friggin' rock outcropping. I, sh I should have known because I didn't see any other nodes uh, near it. But I wasn't sure. It's just, it's very difficult to, I know I keep saying this, but it's true. It's really hard to spot anything, you know, and without the use of the scanner, it makes it doubly difficult. Just trying to see if I can spot any ore nodes from, from the ground here before we get back in the ship. Yeah, just not seeing anything. I almost wonder if we'd be further ahead to go on foot. It's just that this terrain is so rugged is all. All right, here's something. It's rich aluminum again, for Pete's frickin' sake, man. I don't know, are we even in the same spot we were before? <laughs> I don't know, I think there's multiple rich aluminum, you know, clusters on the moon. But go figure, man. The two we find are the least needed ores that we have. Ladies and gentlemen, this is future old guy coming to you. After I left, let you guys go in this episode, I flew around some more, and look what I found, a rich magnesium deposit. Yay! So, I am in the vicinity of uh, about 17.4 lat and 35.5 longe-ish, and there is rich magnesium around here. So, yeah, look at these nodes. See see how hard it is? It is to spot something like this from the air, though. Um, it's just really hard, but this is great. So, okay, we're back in business with magnesium. So I just wanted to bring you guys back uh, real quick, show you that I did find it, and give you the general coordinates. And, um, yeah, so I'm going to mine up as much of this as I can, head back to Proteus, and then in the next episode we will uh, proceed from there. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. I was wrong. There are new creatures. I don't even know what this thing is. What is that? Looks like a giant fly. Whoa. Hold still. Whoa, what is that thing? What? It just turned into a skeleton. It's a hook roach. Oh my goodness. That's alien blood. Uh what about the uh, the shears? We're not getting anything with the shears. That's right. I think I remember I think I remember hearing about this in the patch notes but I just forgot completely forgot about it because you know this is my first time I've been on Aziel uh, in the new update wow man okay I wish we could actually see what it looks like because it um you know it kind of glitched out when we killed it is there any more of those things around that was scary man <laughs> I was coming around the corner and get looking for some more um 
some more uh, magnesium, and then all of a sudden that thing just jumped out and made me jump out of my seat. Holy crap. Okay. Well, I don't see any more of them around, but that was, uh, that was interesting. Oh, what if we go here? Go to creatures. Lutari, Proteus, do, 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 do. It doesn't show up in here, even though we discovered it. Hmm. Yeah, something doesn't seem to be working quite right there. All right, yeah, I'm uh, continuing to find more uh, of the lithium nodes around here. My ship's across the canyon there, as you can see. And um, I went all the way down to the bottom of the canyon, found some, and then there's some more back up on that side of the canyon, too, that I'll, I'll hit when we come back out. Uh, but we have, so far, we have a full stack and then five more, so not too bad. We should probably put our light on, too. There's another one. Oh, boy. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Trying to get a closer look at this guy. Is there two of them? I thought I heard one up there, too. Come here, dude. Are you going to attack or are you going to dance? That's weird. Does do they not attack you or what? Oh. So it's almost like he stings. There we go. We get a little bit better view. Oh. That's weird, man. He glitches out. Yeah. Look at that mouth. <laughs> Pretty cool though. Pretty cool. Just get tissue from that. Get hide from the shears. You can't, you don't seem to be able to harvest the head. Weird. Oh, you can't harvest it with the shears. Okay, I see. Got a big old stinger right here. Buried in the ground, though. Thought I heard another one up here, but I wasn't sure. Yeah, there is... Oh, there's, there's like two more. Yeah, look at him trying to sting me. Probably reload my weapon, huh? I want to. I just. I'm, I'm curious to see how much damage he does. Yeah. Okay. We took a little bit of damage there. Creepy, man. Creepy. Hook roach. Look at that stinger. That's some she-lob shit going on right there. Guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment, share the video. And we'll catch you in the next episode. Bye-bye.